After the ancient Near East and Greece, we will turn our attention to the world of Buddhism and its views on what happens after death. Siddhartha Gautama, known as Buddha, is probably the most famous among the Indian sages to have contested the pan-Indian belief in the retributive act, karman, rebirth, janman, and transmigration, samsara. After his mystic experience of the awakening Bodhi, he realizes he realized that human life was a whole bulk of suffering originating in desire, fear of death, and uncertainty about the afterlife. Consequently, he, by killing desire, it was possible to suppress the, its consequences. Such is the import of the first two truths of the Sermon of Benares. The third truth gives the name of the Nirvana, of Nirvana, of the to the state of happiness and peace so attained. Among the cause of suffering and fears, and Buddha and emphasize uncertainty concerning the afterlife and the fate of the human being in the year after. But it is best to, le to live the uh, present moment and to do away with anxious questioning about God's heaven and hell's la na the nature and the existence of the transmigration, soul and ego, and on the eternal and infini infinite, infinite nature of the universe. Nobody can proceed with such a program without living secular and daily life. The one who takes a plunge into the current, Shrota Apana, in order to follow Buddha, should become a monk able, firstly, to get rid of the evil consequences of the past existence, and secondly, to avoid any act leading to a rebirth. Such a way of life requires detachment and carelessness so that it is possible to fully live the present instant, instant each moment of existence. This mystic program is strikingly summed up firstly in a stanza of the Sutta Nipata. The old things are destroyed, the new ones are not yet arisen. Those is, who rejected future existence, the sage who suppressed the sprout of the existence, and prevented desire to grow, die out like a lump. And by a verse of the Dhammapada, give up what is before, the future. Give up what is behind, past time. Give up what is in the middle, present life. Passing to the farther shore of existence. To do so, the disciple of Buddha is urged to forget the enigmas tormenting one's mind. Therefore, where the son of Malunkia, a Shramanera, i.e., uh, in other words, a pupil admitted to the first degree of monkhood, asked the Buddha why he remained silent concerning the fate of the human beings after death, the master is hardly able to contain his anger, and he answers, O son of Malukia, Malunkia, when you entered the Samga, did you promise you to answer did, to those questions? The son of Malunkia must recognize that Buddha did not, and the, and the later persisted in, his, in this silence. It is easy to realize that this lack of answer was ill accepted by a number of bhikkhus and, and triggered tensions in the community. The bhikkhu Chana, who did not manage to accept the Buddhist doctrine, committed suicide. Some monks were prepared to think and to declare that after death, death there was nothingness. So did the disciple 
yamaka as it is mentioned in the passage of the Samyutta Nikaya. But his colleagues urge him to discuss the question with Shariputra, an historical disciple of Buddha. Yamaka changes mind, but the modern reader does not clearly why. Face to face with the mystery of death and afterlife, Bud Buddhism can hardly answer except by a conjuring trick. So it uses as a retort a dialectic procedure called tetralema, a set of consecu consecutive questions or statements of which none is true. An example is as follows. Does a Tathagata, perfect monk, a superman, Uttara Purisha, come to be reborn after death? No. Does he not, not come to be reborn after death? No. Does he both come to be reborn and not come to be reborn after death? No. Does he never, never come to be reborn, nor come not to be reborn after death? No. And when the perfect monk, monk the Arad, seeks to make a summary of his life, he declared, destroyed is the rebirth, since a pure life has been led. What ought to be done has been done. There will no more coming to any state of being in this world. But after 400 and or 500 years of monastic history, laymen started to ever say in the Buddhist church Samgha. Things did change and gradually agnosticism gave way to the traditional tenets of in the Indian background, retributive act, rebirth, transmigration, while Buddha, while Buddha started to be honored as a deity and the negation of a, any kind of soul was questioned. The conundrum caused by the presence of retribution and the lack of a subject endowed with a genuine ego, morally responsible for his deed, was strong strongly felt. So Buddhist thinker of diverse confessions tacitly reintroduced belief in the transmigration and developed scheme which gave place to retribution of act according to the principle that the done work will not perish and the undone work will not obtain profit. To a number of dummy and, and entities replacing the immortal soul denied by Buddha with the Pudgala and the Gandharva. For its part, popular Buddhism produced a massive, uh, 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 an enormous literature about the retribution of act and rebirth in a number of events and hell. Else, the most striking and famous work of these are the Jataka series, where the Buddha passes through many reincarnations, re even in animal form. These were some of the main aspects of Buddhist thought on the life after death. In the next and last video of this week, we will see how people who are alive today interact with people who lived in the past with their ancestors. To see how it works, let's move on to China.